Okay, let's uh, start. Welcome everyone. So that's the plan for um, for today. Also, maybe let's see. So we're going to have, you know, you already got the grades for exercise set two. So I just want to have like a joint session that we discuss some things on that um, on that exercise set. And uh, especially problem one, I think there are a few interesting things to discuss there. You may, many of you notice it uh, when solving the exercise. And then if we need, you know, you had this exercise session last week with, um, I guess, what I spoke with Anga. You talked about um, uh, frequency, how to use the frequency function in Excel to find the distribution of uh, porosity. By the way, what kind of distribution did you get? Was it uniform or if you remember? It was a normal type distribution? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, you were doing um, Monte Carlo, right? So which you can simply do by applying different rows. But so if needed today, we're going to have a, like a short um, so refreshment on on Monte Carlo and also on probability trees. Okay. The next exercise, uh, we'll have one exercise on that. So you have to mix and combine them in a smart way. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you understand um, uh, to have to, to solve the exercise okay and then we start with a new topic which is very uh, important this course is focused on um, offshore uh, oil and gas fields so the offshore structure is a very important part of the field uh, it also affects pretty much the cost how do I select it um, so it's something at least we have to have some knowledge about Okay, but let's see if we go that far. It's quite ambitious, so probably we won't make it, but let's see. Okay, so let's see just that everybody's in the same page. That was the exercise. We are working with that from exercise set uh, one, okay, with this field, the field snow white field. That I have a set of uh, subsea whales, then I have a main flow line or a pipeline going all the way to this island called Melkoya and uh, that where I process the gas, I convert it to LNG, and then I send it to customers. Okay, any, I think they have contract with USA and with Spain. So the main task here was, it was a bit open. Okay, so you have to decide on, now using economics, not only technical, um, but purely petroleum engineering uh, uh, considerations, you have to use some economics to decide on that, okay? Which ultimately we use, even though it's, you know, it will be better from the technical point of view to do it in a certain way, we try to maximize profit, okay? And this profit, this magical indicator is net present value, okay? Would we try to compound uh, everything? Okay, so you, you had to say maximize economic profit by changing the number of whales and the field plateau rate. Okay, and then you had to see how robust your um, your your development was by changing initially was the gas price and the capex of the LNG plant. And for that, I recommended some ranges to look at. I say you should try at least nine cases. And I say for whales, try between six and 15 and 20 and 35 on the plateau rate. That was uh, <coughs> based on the, on, the, on the values you had from the previous exercise set. But uh, you, in reality, you should explore, like you want to find the best, okay? So you should kind of do a thorough exploration of number of whales and, and plateau rate. Okay, and I gave you some cost numbers. Uh, mainly what we are considering is uh, Drillex, 
which is simply a, you have number of wheels multiplied by the cost of a wheel. A manifold, that depending on how many wheels you have, you will need more or less manifolds. The main transportation line, remember if we are flowing more, probably the size also will be bigger or smaller of this line. But we are assuming that doesn't change much, okay, to keep it simple for this uh, project. And we are assuming is um, a 500, uh, one half a billion US dollars. And now the cost of the LNG plant, we are saying that depends how much I'm producing, how much I have to process. If I need to process a higher rate, I need to have a bigger plant. That plant has to have a higher capacity, higher processing capacity, pump, pumping capacity, compression capacity, processing capacity, okay? And we, we had this, you had this linear relationship between the capex of that plant and the rate of the fuel. And finally, the last thing we considered there was the, the LNG carriers that you need. Depending how much you're producing per year, then that tells you how many trips you have to make. You have a certain number of trips the tanker can make per year. So then you can compute how many tankers you need. <coughs> okay, so that was basically, uh, we are neglecting tax, uh, depreciation, OPEX, ABEX, ex exploration expenditures, all of that. Okay, so let's see, if you remember from exercise set, uh, from exercise set one, okay? okay. How was, if we are going to make this compound revenue, which everything is on the same reference, everything is on dollars of year zero, okay? If you remember, what was the behavior of the revenue versus the Q plateau of the field. Any of you remember that chart? Okay, it was increasing. So I'm going to here just to put a, a, a chart. Here you have a Q of the field versus time. Okay, so if we choose a very low plateau, okay, it will decline something like that. Let's say that's one. Okay, that maybe gives me this point here. Okay. Then if I produce a higher rate, here I'm saying keeping the number of wheels fixed. Okay. Okay. Now if I increase the rate, of course, that's something you should know already by heart, okay? Simply, the plateau will become shorter, okay? Number two. But because of that, I'm recovering more gas, in this case, earlier, okay? Therefore, I'm not discounting all of that gas has a lower discounting factor, okay? Therefore, number two will be higher, something like that, okay? Number three... Maybe something like that. Okay. Until what is the limit of that curve? I cannot increase indefinitely, make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. There will be a point where actually I have no plateau. Okay. Simply entering to decline from day one, which will be number one. Okay. And you saw when you calculate the curve, actually it looks something like that initially. It's very sharp but then it starts to to be f to become flat until you have this will be point 0.3 and this will be point 0.4 actually becomes flat that's the maximum that physically my system can deliver okay all of you got this curve okay so it shouldn't be you just have to to bring it from from memory okay <clears throat> now, if you remember, if we are going to make a simple equation for NPV, okay, NPV was what? It's revenue. That correct? Okay, revenue 
minus capex minus let's let's divide it like that okay minus three legs so the revenue comes from the production profile I have a gas price and then I discount this revenue every year and I bring everything to year zero okay so that's what we are plotting here <clears throat> If we are keeping the number of wells fixed, okay, this guy also is fixed. Okay, it's simply that's a constant. So now what happens when you plot it now in this exercise that you were also looking at cost? What happens when you plot it NPV versus plateau rate? And not all of you found the curve, okay? Some of you found, again, okay, it's, it's increasing, right? But some of you found only that part of the curve, the increasing part. But some of you, some of your groups, they found actually that the curve has a maximum. Okay, looks something like that. And of course, I want to be operating, I want to decide on my field where exactly here the point that gives you the biggest plateau uh, the, the highest NPV okay so what is happening here to the left of this curve okay here the increasing the increasing Q plateau okay gives a higher revenue than the increase in capex okay than the increase in capex okay remember if i have to every time this capex is actually a function of as a function of how much i have to process okay? it's a function of many things but let's call it the capex facilities of the facilities in our case of our LNG plant is a function of the plateau QJ QG plateau okay and to the right actually the increase in plateau rate gives a lower revenue a lower increase in revenue than than increase in capex okay so here capex is actually bigger than the revenue okay let's make it like that okay <clears throat> remember this is for number of wells fixed okay remember also some of you could not find the complete curve what happens if you have a limitation on the the flow rate per well that we had in this problem, right? We said we cannot produce more than 3 million uh, standard cubic meter per day of gas. So that can limit the curve. In that case, I think many of you just, you know, that was the limit due to maximum Q well max allowed. But some of you disobeyed, which is nice, and you did the whole for other plateau rates, and then you found, well, it has a nice, it has a peak. Okay? So, let's see a bit. We know intuitively that's what's happening. Okay? A higher plateau gives you earlier revenue. A higher revenue, you recover earlier those, those uh, that, that uh, money. But also is increasing capex i need to create a bigger plan to process that gas so you have a balance between the two on the left part of the curve the revenue is, is winning and on the right part of the curve the cost is winning okay so let's try to put that at least for our example in a bit more mathematical way a bit more formal way okay for our case <coughs> What is the shape of this capex of the facilities? 
Okay, remember we are keeping the number of wells fixed. So drill X, the cost of the manifold, everything will be constant. Okay, the only thing that I'm changing is the plateau rate. Okay, so for our case, capex of the facilities, what is the behavior versus Q plateau? Q plateau. It was simply a straight line, right? Actually, we even the straight line was passing through the origin. Okay, I think something like that. And let's say that one had a slope of a. <coughs> what other thing did we have? On was the capex of LNG and was also the capex of of the carrier. Okay, we had also that capex. And that also, what was the trend of this, of this cost? It's like a step function, okay, where you have, if you need one carrier, you're going to have, if you're working within this range of Q plateaus, you will need just one carrier, okay? Then, if you can make it with 22 trips, but if then you need more than 22 trips, you have to add one more carrier, and then you have to add one more carrier, and so forth. Okay, so just to avoid that complexity that you have a step function, I'm just going to say, let's make that into a straight line. Okay, let's assume that the number of carriers can be not an integer, can be a continuous number. Okay, just for the sake of, of our discussion. Okay, so let's going to say that we're going to have one equation going like that. <clears throat> okay, so where do we find the maximum of NPV? Where is the maximum of NPV? Okay, you know the maximum of the curve in this case is concave, convex, concave, right? Okay, so how do we find if we know the function is concave, how do we find the maximum? We say simply that. It has to be when the, the, the partial derivative of NPV, of the variable we are changing, Q plateau, that has to be equal to zero, right? Okay. And that, if you remember the expression we had, NPV was equal to revenue plus minus capex minus um, drillix. Okay. When we derive that, drill x is a constant, simply we took take it away. And finally, we end up that the maximum will be when the derivative of revenue with respect to plateau rate will be equal to the derivative of capex with respect to plateau rate. <coughs> and now we know something about this guy, right? We already said it's a linear function. We already mentioned we have a slope that we say, if we consider only LNG facilities, then we can say that that derivative of capex with the plateau rate is going to be equal to A, okay? And A is a positive number. You're always going to have an increase in the cost of these facilities when you are increasing the rate. Okay? Therefore, if we look at our revenue function, okay, let's make a plot on the revenue. Okay? Remember what was the revenue function? Something like that. Again, was maximum exactly here. And now I want the derivative to be equal to this to this value, okay? The derivative here is very big, okay? Here is becoming smaller and smaller 
and smaller and here it becomes exactly zero okay so depending on how the cap is, is affected by my plateau rate if it's very much affected if the curve is very much inclined if that a is very big okay the optimum point will be someplace here because that's where the the slope of revenue is also high but if that is very very low it, it changes very gradually with the plateau rate then the maximum will be closer to the end of the curve okay and the NPV so that was the revenue equation and that was the the NPV for example was something like that okay that's okay so that's just a bit like explaining why with all the assumptions we're making why you're you're got you got those results okay a bit more uh, you know uh, formally mathematic explaining what's happening <coughs> now remember this uh, function might also be a step function okay for example if you need you cannot use just one big plant but you have to split in two plants okay then you have a jump in the in the function okay so that usually we say this is valid for a range of variation of q plateau okay that you assume that is linear it's usually you know for a range if you go outside the range you maybe need less plants you need more plants it's it by me more more complex okay and also if you see here so these two slopes are summing up okay you have a slope a and you have a slope b okay so that's also affecting the optimum this optimum point these two a and b are this this guy here affected by slopes A and B okay <clears throat> now let's see what happened we have to decide on two things that was the task of this exercise okay the plateau rate and now but for all of this exercise we are saying the number of whales is fixed okay now let's make the opposite we are going to keep the plateau rate fixed remember it's much better if we to analyze a problem to study a problem we fix some things and we see what happens when we vary okay and then we fix one and then we see what happens when the other parameter var varies okay it's uh, like a divide and conquer approach okay so let's see now what is the revenue and i think that's something you didn't plot okay so let's see about what about the number of whales okay and I don't know I think maybe w one of you one group made this plot okay but you have uh, the revenue function that's not NPV okay just simply the revenue function versus number of whales and um, the Q of the plateau is fixed How does that curve look like? First, to understand it better, we're going to make the Q of the field, the profile. That's what gives me the revenue. Okay? So let's let's start with that plot. Okay. How does it look like? Let's say that's for number of whales one. <laughs> Okay, one. What happens when I add more whales to that system and I still keep produce the same plateau rate? What happens? Why do I want to add more whales if I can produce with, you know, only 
only a few number of wells. Why do I want to include more wells? Prolong to prolong the plateau, okay? <coughs> so when I have more wells, what will happen? I have longer plateau, but then kind of a sharper decline, okay? Number of wells too. What happens when I add even more wells? The same thing, okay? I prolong the plateau, and then it will decline also sharply. Okay. And here we say the number of whales 3 will be bigger than number of whales 2 will be bigger than number of whales 1. Now, that's what it does to the production profile. What does it do to the revenue to to the revenue? Hmm? Also increasing, right? I'm recovering here more fluid, more gas earlier. Okay? Therefore, I'm increasing this revenue function. But actually, it's always increasing, but it becomes very asymptotic. Okay? It becomes very, very flat. Okay? It will still have to increase, but it will increase very, very slowly. Okay? And that, if you think, has some justification in the fact that, so that will be, for example, number of wells one number of wells 2 okay if you remember for a linear if you have a linear production potential okay okay you remember that the duration of the plateau we calculate with the production potential at time zero, when I haven't produced anything, okay, divided by the Q of the plateau, minus one, and here I have one over M, okay? We saw that equation, you know, a few classes back, okay? So, and if you remember, this Q PPO of the field was number of wells times the Q PPO of the well, of one single well. The maximum the field can produce is simply the number of wells that I have times, times how much the maximum that a well can produce. Okay? And M had inside, uh, if you remember, that, that is for undersaturated oil case okay. you remember was 1 over n w a j okay therefore the duration of the plateau is q production potential of a single well divided by q plateau 1 minus n w 1 over a g Okay, so you find this here that the plateau will be longer and longer, but it has a inverse multiplier here. Okay, therefore, every time I increase number of wells, it will become more and more asymptotic. It will be slower and slower and slower. Okay, be careful. This is for another case. It's not the gas case. Okay, it's undersaturated oil. It's a slightly different. Actually, one of you showed the equation how it looks like for for gas one of your uh, one of the groups but the same is like to explain why it becomes asymptotic okay because every time the gain i have in plateau duration is very small so it becomes very very uh, very slow okay so now let's look at um okay we had now the revenue and we have to see also, to calculate NPV, we have revenue minus capex minus drillix. Okay. That one, we know how it behaves. Capex, do we have to see how it behaves with the number of wells? Yes. Hmm? Yes? Sure? This capex, we are saying, is the LNG plant, right? 
we are saying is the LNG carrier, okay? And that basically depends on the plateau rate, okay? That's the main, the main factor that is causing change in that parameter. So I'm going to say CAPEX depends, for our case, for our problem, does not depend strongly on the number of wells, okay? An assumption. But relics, this is a very important factor that depends on the number of wells. And how does that equation look like? For Drillex, again, like a step function, okay, simply I need more wells, the cost will be like that. Okay. So if we plot now, and that's also, we plot revenue, uh, we plot NPV versus number of wells, how does it look like? for a Q plateau fixed. Okay, some of you found only this part of the curve, okay? Simply going down, but actually some of you found the peak before. Okay, so again, just like in the other case, when we were changing plateau rate, you have a peak, okay? What happens to the left of the peak? number of wells star. To the left of the peak, the increase in the number of wells gives you a, a longer plateau. This longer plateau gives you a, an increase in revenue which is bigger than the cost of drilling that well. Okay? It's a long sentence, but basically in this period, an increase in number of wells gives you a longer plateau Okay, that also increases the revenue. Okay, and that revenue, increase in revenue, is bigger than the increase in cost in drillings. Okay, increase is bigger than the increase <coughs> in drillings. Okay. Now, what happens to the right? In that case, it's going down if I increase the number of wells, okay? That means the increase in drill X is bigger than the increase in revenue, okay? <coughs> We can do something similar to what we have done for um, for the plateau. We know it's like a concave function, so we can say the maximum of the NPV function will be find will be found when the partial derivative is equal to zero, and then I have the derivative with um, revenue is equal to the derivative of drill x with the number of wells. Okay? And we know this is like a, you know, a piecewise function. So if we make the same approximation, we allow continuous or non-integer number of wells. It's a similar conclusion. Okay? In the revenue function, the maximum will be when the slope is equal to that to that derivative okay to that factor to that constant okay okay that's that's where the maximum is located Okay, and usually this is like, uh, okay, in our case, it's a big number, okay? 
is a big number compared to NPV. Okay, if you remember, I think we are talking about 0.1. Okay, and the NPV, how much was it for, how much did you get for, I think it was 11 billion, was it? For some of the cases. I think you got around, uh, so this number is 0.1 billion um, okay, per number of wells. So it's a number which is uh, relatively high Therefore, usually the maximum on that curve is more to the left compared to the QG. Okay. So now we have seen it separately. Okay. We have seen, so far we said NPV versus Q plateau and NW is fixed. And we saw some interesting behavior. And we also said NPV versus number of wells when Q plateau is fixed. Okay? But now we want to do exactly to decide on both simultaneously at the same time. Okay? So how do we how do we do that? One way that was something that you, uh, a few of you did, you try to make a plot of NPV versus Q plateau. Okay, and you found something like that. Okay, for number of wells one, and then you plotted on top of that chart for other number of wells. Okay, and you found, for example, something like that going down okay or you even found something a bit strange okay a trend something like that okay so i think just that it will be clear i prefer to use another type of chart so we can see exactly have a very clear picture of what's happening with npv how is that parameter that i'm basing most of my decisions just to simply maximize profit, okay? How does it behave with these two things? So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to create another type of plot called a color map, okay? Which is equivalent to like a 3D plot, okay? So in but instead of making three axes in which I have number of wells, Q plateau, and revenue, NPV, the profit, I'm going to make it two-dimensional, okay? I'm just going to make something like this, Q um, plateau, yeah, sorry, I'm going to put here number of wells, okay? And I'm going to make a collection of points. Simply, I'm going to put like a grid, okay? And I'm going to try every combination. You know, if, I, if a mathematician or a guy working in optimization listens to this class, he say, this guy is crazy, okay? We don't do it like that, okay? This is like brute force approach. I'm just trying to see, trying to map all possible options, okay? Mathematicians say, no need. You can use some fancy method to find that, okay? But I just want to see, okay? Sometimes I need to see to believe, okay? Like, uh, I, ha I have to do that, okay? And here, each point will have a color. And the color will be the NPV, okay? And the, the lower the color, the lower the NPV, so everyone will have a different color. For example, I think I have used, in the example I'm going to show you, red is the highest, then comes, I think, the opposite. Yellow, then I think it's like an orange, then I think I have this one, and then I think goes to blue, and then it goes to, and then finally goes to like black, okay, when it's very low. 
So that tells you how high NPV is, maximum and minimum. Okay. So I have done, I'm just going to show you an example. It's not exactly for the exercise, but it's for another case which is on the compendium. Okay. Just to see how it looks like. Okay, so you have here exactly what I mentioned. I made a variation of the number of wells between 10 and 15. Okay, and I made a variation of the plateau rate from, I think that's around 50 all the way to 3 something. Okay, and I'm plotting here how this MPV function looks like. Okay, so if you see here, if we could fix the number of wells, let's say you're looking only at this line. You cannot see very well because of the color, but you will see exactly what we have discussed before. Okay, NPV versus the plateau rate simply has this behavior. Okay, if you took any line vertical here, keeping the number of wells fixed, you will see that. And what happens here? Why I have no values here? Here is simply decline, okay? I cannot go higher than that. Simply, I've just entered directly into decline in this point, okay? Yeah. And here will be longer plateau, shorter plateau, shorter plateau, until I have no plateau, okay? When I have more wells, simply I can produce more initially, okay? So that's why I can reach a higher plateau rate, okay? What happens now if I look Fixed number, fixed plateau rate, and I look changing number of wells, number of producing wells. So this will be line one. Okay, and I look at, for example, a line in this direction. If I look along line two. number of wells and here Q plateau is fixed. Again I see that behavior, okay? Sometimes I might not have this maximum, but I have that behavior. Going up, a maximum, and then coming down. Now going back to our solution before we take the break, in which point do you operate this field? What is the one, the combination of wells and plateau rate that gives you maximum revenue, maximum profit, NPV? You cannot see very clearly, right? But it should be the most yellow. So someplace here. Okay. To help you, I have made another version which is changing the scale. Okay. I simply have, if you compare these two figures, the maximum is the same, but the minimum now is not 100, 500, but is 3,000, okay? So that tells you very clearly that the maximum, the sweet spot for that field, for that particular field, is with 12 wells and yeah, 200, uh, this is uh, 1,000 barrels, okay? That's for another example for what? Okay, so maybe for next year we will have in a more advanced exercise. <laughs> but like here, you have made a, a limited matrix, okay? You have made from, I think it was six to 15 wells, I said, and you had from, uh, was 20 to 30, okay? So you were examining just part of it. And also maybe it didn't take enough points. If you make that, you make brute force hundreds points, you will see that there are some combinations that have, uh, that give you Best okay, and uh, yeah, let's take a break. Let's say uh, 15 minutes. We come back 120. I think we need a break.
Okay, so I just with that um, I just want to give a few just you know remember we have made some assumptions on this uh, problem okay so one of them is that uh, this capex was actually of the facilities in our case is uh, is the LNG plant. was not a function of the number of wells which uh, remember so le let's try to make a, a more complete expression of capex excluding drillex okay so you have capex typically of the offshore structure you have capex of the subsea system you have capex of the top side, what we call the facilities, top side, what else can we have here? Um, Okay, in our case, we don't have, we're not including this offshore structure. Okay, that's the discussion we're going to have later. We are having that installation in land, it's a subsea to beach, so this part is not there. Uh, the subsea, as I mentioned, that is, you know, the, the manifolds, the template, the flow lines, the pipeline, you also have the umbilicals that you use to control to send fluids to the well, inhibition, hydraulic control fluid, um, uh, uh, power, you send uh, uh, signals, um, instrumentation, so that's umbilicals. Okay. And this which was, in our case, we also had the, the capex of the uh, the carrier okay the LNG carrier or we can also call the tanker okay, if I need to to acquire tanker for the field but uh, so in our case you can see if I for example have higher plateau rate the flow lines maybe have to be bigger okay um, and also the top side we discuss if we have to process more gas this has to be uh, bigger okay. but also for example in this case they are affected somehow by the number of wells okay also affected in reality they are also affected by the number of wells okay for example if you have more wells you need more manifolds like we had in our case we need more umbilicals we might need some more flow lines to tie in. So we have neglected that complexity in this exercise. Okay? Yep? Why do you break out the drilling expenditure separately? Just for, just for the discussion. Just, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, so we call it drill X. We separate. We keep it in a separate box. But it's just for the discussion. Ideally, or normally, drill X should be inside CAPEX. Okay. Should be considered inside capex. Okay. That's uh let's put it here um removing <coughs> Okay. 
Okay, we keep it, we treat it as a separate term. Um, also, if you have, there are some of your structures, we are going to discuss that in a, uh, hopefully in a while, okay? But there are some structures, for example, if you need to process a higher rate, okay, a higher plateau rate, you need to have bigger separator, you need to have bigger compressor, you need to have more compressors, you need to have more pumps. This also adds in weight to the offshore structure, which we don't have in our case, okay? But the platform has to be stronger, has to be bigger to load, to bear the load of that, of my facilities. Uh, but also, it can be affected if I have an offshore structure from where, where drill, wells are drilled, okay, that house wells. In that case, they might also be affected by the number of wells, okay? It's all, it is also affected by the number of wells, okay? Especially for a structure that houses, that has, that carries or that houses well hits, okay, and Christmas trees. Okay, so in that case, also you have to take into account that you know it. Um, it, it also affects the cost of the offshore structure. Okay. Um, Just also one more note, okay? For, um, you also have to include, so for, to estimate the cost of the, of the top side facilities, of the facilities, one also should include, also, you are not producing just the main phase, okay? It's not simply just gas. You also comes with some additional products, okay? It can be water, it can be condensate. If it's an oil field, can be it will be gas and water, okay? So you have also to process those streams to include also for a gas field, Q oil and Q water and Q gas, okay? You have to process all of them. Therefore, that capex of the facilities is also a function of the the rate of oil maximum the rate of gas maximum and the rate of water maximum okay so you have to be sure that during the life let's say of, of your field you're not only in our case you're not only able to to handle to process the gas we're able to to handle for example the condensate or the water and that also has some impact on the on the cost okay yeah so just uh, that that example that i show here this data is not from the exercise set uh, problem one exercise set two is from the an example in the compendium you can find it in page uh, 102 and you can see all the values that are used, the derivation, and how I came with that um, with that plot. Okay, if such if some of one of you wants to read more in detail. Okay. Uh, also, this discussion is uh, a bit less technical, but it's also presented by in the supplementary material that I provide you. Okay. You have this paper by uh, Halderson, and he has some discussion on how the number of wells affects the um, or okay how the number of wells affects the NPV and how the plateau rate also affects the NPV. But I think it's, it's if because you already have done the homework, so I think now you have a much better base to go and read and understand the paper. Okay, because if you read it before without knowing how these numbers come and what affects what, I think you know it's it's not so not so good. Okay, if you are also interested, I gave it also uh, as an additional material. There is another paper by 
Van Damme. I think he was a manager in Shell, was he? Yeah. Yeah. So he he has also uh, a discussion that is optimum production from a natural gas fuel. Okay, which it's a is is a similar discussion of of what we have been talking about the last these last weeks. Just a s historical comment: the, the Groningen field outside the, the Netherlands still produced, I think, it was the earliest North Sea field produced anything. It's a huge gas field, and uh, it's called called a sink, sinking of the ground, like Ecotus did for in Norway. But uh, so it's it's kind of a I don't know what the date of this is. Probably around sixty. Yeah, it's on this from the 60s. Very smart people on the 60s. So a lot of 68. So the other thing is, mm -hmm. just at the same time, Phillips Petroleum uh, discovered the, together with some other people, the Hewitt field in the UK. To Mike Petrovich, who everybody's heard about, made many, many times, he really made uh, his impact in becoming a, a high level, kind of like vice president, paid the te technical. By designing the Hewitt field, which originally was going to have, I think, three platforms, and basically it was just a, it was like a large sandstone communicating, no faults, nothing. And he introduced this concept of why don't we just use one platform and maybe two at the most, and drill the wells. And they didn't have long lateral wells; they just they drilled them around, and basically said that we can drain this large area with one or two less platforms than what everybody else is designing for. They did all the economics, they did all the assessments, of the reservoir, the production, everything, and the, the main numbers on the capex for the platform. Mm -hmm. And they went with this, this smaller number of platforms, and they saved a lot of money. And Petkovic basically uh, secured himself within the company thereafter. Of course, then he used, they used some of the same logic in the development of the equity field structures, you know, the, the platforms and everything. So it's kind of an interesting uh, history there. The other is that Calga Hall, which I was sitting in this, not this building, but uh, uh, in, I think, the early 80s. Calga Halderson became the president of the Society of Petroleum Engineers just a few years back, the vice president of, uh, I think, uh, Statoil in, in the United States for their Gulf of Mexico uh, operations. And uh, so came came out of this. And by the way, Petrovich has got his PhD from the university here, mm -hmm. so we can take a little bit of credit. <laughs> and then the last thing I'd like maybe you can mention is that cost models, what I call cost models, which are the dependency of all these major costs on like number of wells, type of wells. There's very little continuous functions there. They're very discrete mm -hmm. cost models. So it's, you don't have a continuous function for a lot of these major cost items because they come in like quantum leaps of, mm -hmm. of cost, uh, which makes automated optimization more difficult because the functions are not continuous. And I'm just curious where you're getting the cost models to give problems like this. Are you just making them approximate, or did you actually get them from Statoil? Or? Um, yeah, um, like the one, the example on on the on the compendium is from a Brazilian field that they published an SPE paper. So I took the cost data from there. The other, um, it's a bit related to you know, to the discussion here, that really you don't have, for many things, it's not simply a continuous function. It might be a continuous function, like on the case of the facilities, okay, mm -hmm. within a range. You can make it bigger or smaller, the separator will be bigger or smaller within a range. But if you go outside that range, you have to, it will be just a step function, okay. So I'm just saying it's, a, of course, it's simplified the well, you know, we are not deciding if we produce bigger rates or smaller rates, you need 7 inch, you need 5 inch, okay? But we are assigning a lump number. If you want to do everything, to look at everything in the same task, okay, in the same course, without becoming a master thesis, you have to make some simplifications. But I think you have to be aware that you're making, you know, simplified calculations, okay? In the real case, 
all of these things to calculate cost, you send all of your values to a cost department. They might take a month to make the calculation and they come back to you, okay, in real life. I just want to show you how things are connected, okay, and it's important to consider that connection between them. Okay? But it's by using these uh, simplified models that you can do everything on the same exercise. So it's based, you know, I, I always say, you know, I try to make my best when making the exercise, but also it's your work to verify that I didn't screw up, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the values can be, one year was I gave some number for the compressor in Oscar and was very different from what they found on the web, okay? So also you have to do some, some QC. Okay, but I think these two papers, I think they discuss now that you have, we have finished now with the part on production performance. We have, remember, this small part on the, on, um, on the multi-phase flow that I just want you to know about. Okay. Did you stop the recording? I think I restart. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we have finished with that part, production, NPV calculations. Um, and I suggest just to complement what was taught here, if you want to read a bit more in the in the compendium. Also, on these two papers, I think now you have enough background to go inside and understand and get uh, and get uh, you know pro, uh, and get uh, use of it. Uh, before we go to another topic that I that we have for today, any question? Okay, that's not good. I think you should have many questions, so, but let's see. Okay. okay, so the next thing we had on the list was, um, was uh, just to see if there was something unclear from last class, the, from last week. Okay, it was a long time ago, but basically what we saw was that especially all throughout the life of the field, especially during the development phase, you have a lot of uncertainty on, the, on, on any number that you use, okay? And you have a lot of variation. So sometimes, like, we took this very simple case for reserve estimation. We took, like, uh, maybe a block type, a cube type reservoir, where you're not sure it doesn't have a unique value each property, porosity, saturation, net to gross, the volume factor, volume of the rock, they, they don't know, and you, you, you're not sure about the input. It doesn't have one unique value. It might have a distribution, okay, that we discussed here, that I measure, for example, I know it has this distribution. So each number is not only that it goes from a minimum to a maximum, but it also has a probability of occurrence. Okay. If I don't know anything, all of them have the same. Okay. I don't know which one is preferred due to due to yeah. But if I have if I have measurements or I have more knowledge about the system or I understand a bit more about the physics, I can make a more educated guess. Okay. Uh, so, for example, we explained some distributions that are used uniform. Like I say, you know, you don't know anything. You just know small and big. If you have some more indication that you are around the number, you can use log normal, you can use normal, okay? And then we said, that's the basic problem we have. We have one function that cannot be an equation, can be also a simulator, can be a Excel sheet, can be a, f a set of programs. And you want to compute also the outcome, but also with each, with the probability of each number. You just don't want to know that, for example, the initial oil in place will be from here to here. You also want to know what is the probability of each number that you're going to have. Okay? So for that, I told you, if this model runs fast enough, uh, you can maybe do a lot of iterations in, you know, not an excessive amount of time. You can make, um, you can use sampling methods. Okay. There is one very well-known method called Monte Carlo, in which you basically you perform a random sampling. Okay, you assign a random value of each one of them, you compute, and then you record the result. 
you assign a random number, compute, and record the result. And you repeat that for many, many, many times. Okay? And at the end, you compute the distribution of, of, um, of, of that output. Okay? Uh, we said also, very important, that we make the sampling based on the cumulative probability function. We just don't do it simply, but we try to do it like that. Because if we make the sampling here, we usually, with many, many samples, it will be uniform. And then you're capturing, basically, the probability of, the, of that variable. Okay? Also, it's a bit more practical. You just have to make a random number between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. uh, then we went into how you know the the numbers that are typically used for uh, um, reserve um, expectation curve, and uh, we said there are a few important numbers, and these numbers might change with, with the country or with the company. How many iterations are needed? I told you some cases you can use that equation to estimate the number of iterations, but usually you try to increase and then see if the results change, if the distribution change. Remember, if we are able to make one million infinite number of iterations, we will have the true distribution, but we are able only to make a sample. We are only able to make a group out of that. So we have to make sure how close we are, if we make that sample of a few values, how close we are to the true sample. Uh, I also show you there are other methods like hypercube, Latin hypercube, where you make a kind of a smart type of sampling. You define a subdivision of values of the variables using the same number of points, and then you randomly choose in each one of them one of these numbers. Make a simulation. Choose again, and then make a simulation. Usually they say that gives slightly less iterations than, than using Monte Carlo. Okay? Then we went to the case that what happens when Monte Carlo takes a very long time? And that's typically when that function is, you know, it takes a long time to evaluate. Evaluating this function. Okay? So I told you there is another approach that the industry has been using for a long time uh, called decision or probability trees. And the nice thing about this approach is you can also use variables that are not continuous, okay? That simply can be decision or they can have two integer values, cannot have anything in between. Like if you want to take a decision, okay, you want to evaluate what is best to develop, not to develop, to drill an appraisal well, not to drill, um, to select which kind of offshore facility you're going to be using. Things that are not continuous, okay? That I have to, it, it has simply a, an integer value. But typically in those problems, we actually have a combination of two things, okay? We have a combination of decision variables or integer variables, and we have a combination of continuous variables, okay? For example, to find, to develop or not develop, and then the platform, you still need to know the reserves, you still need to know the cost, okay? And these are things that are, you know, like the reserves, we, we are dealing with it in a continuous way, okay? Um, important in the tree, you have to use the nomenclature. Uh, square is decision, something I have power upon, I decide upon. So in this case, I decide to develop or not. Then I have also on the top side facility. But then the chance nodes are things I have no control. Okay, I can get a very big reservoir, I can get a small reservoir, or I can get a medium reservoir. And every time I have a chance node, I have to have an associated probability to that branch. Okay? If there is the same probability, you simply assign the same one divided by the number of options you have it will be the same, okay? But if not, you have to convert, so you have to convert your distribution into discrete distribution, okay? And remember, we said here, for example, if you want to calculate NPV, 
or you want to you need the reserves and you need the cost okay so you have here three options you have your three options so three by three that gives you nine and then you have three more here you have 27 so you have to perform 27 evaluations it's much better than a thousand okay it will be much faster but you still have to do a lot of them okay so if you want to add more variables or you want to use more points for example you want to use five instead of three okay they will be five five and three that increase dramatically the size and the number of simulations okay so you have to be careful when you know choosing enough branches and enough uh, variables but don't it can grow very quickly okay it can go very quickly on the size and then it becomes you know not possible to to manage I mean, um, is, the, is the course by uh, the guest professor here? Brad Wood. Uh, yeah yeah, no. yeah they are discussing yeah they are discussing this part more in in detail mm -hmm. so there is a uh, maybe this, that's worth mentioning there is um is uncertainty on subsurface data i think so we can find it. I think that's useful if you. Um, okay, subsurface decision analysis. He goes. Uh, is um, he's a professor too in our department, Radar Vratul, and he's. Uh, I think he's affiliated with University of Stavanger. Yeah, so he, uh, University of I think he got his degree at University of Tulsa, and master's, and then Stanford gets, you know, kind of a heavy course. Okay, but uh, it's, uh, they, he covers more of, of, of these uh, methods in detail, and also many other things, okay, basically focus on, on reservoir, subsurface, but also if you want to go to know more information, you can take that course. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to mention the way we calculate. So we can calculate the value. If you have, for example, the reserves and the cost, you can calculate the value of that option. Okay? But when you're going to give the value of a branch, you have to be a weighted uh, average of the probability with the value, okay? And for that we said we carry, we multiply the probability of each branch until we get to the end. In that case, this case with this capex will be 0.33 times 0.33. And that will be the probability of occurrence of that case. Okay? So if you want to know the compound, the average, the expected value of all of that branch, then you have to sum up that I have here the probability of each option times the value of that option okay to give you like an indication how much the branch uh, how much the branch uh, uh, the value of the branch okay it might be that you have very high values but these values they have very low probability okay so that's how we account for 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 that or that we have very low values but they have a very high probability okay so the exercise you're going to get, it's um, you have to take a decision if to if to perform appraisal wells or not. Let me maybe show you what do we have. Part of exercise set four. Um, it's lost, I think. Well, it's basically um, you have s you want to make uh, estimation of the value of a discovery. Okay, you have to use the same equations we used last time on the previous class exercise. But in that case, you have to calculate an economic value. Okay, and if you perform appraisal, you might get a better idea about the extent of the reservoir. Okay, they might know how what is the extension of the reservoir. So you have to decide 
if the information you get by if the value of that information you get by doing appraisal will compensate will help you to to get a better value of the project okay so you have to combine um, a bit uh, trees probability trees because you have a decision <coughs> variable and you have to combine um, with um, with uh, yeah with continuous sampling okay but you're going to get it uh, maybe tomorrow after you such that once you deliver one you don't lose the, the the inertia but you just get start on the new one okay that's how it works okay so now we have managed to cover a few things okay the offshore structure is the last part but uh, we have now nine minutes so I suggest we s we take it tomorrow if that's okay we have to talk about so let's remove it from here but we have to talk about what kind of offshore structures we have for oil and gas production how do we decide um, which uh, you know which structure do we use um, the features of each structure so we have a few things that that we have to cover in there okay but let's take it tomorrow we have eight minutes so it will be too short okay. I don't want to cut the discussion okay uh, before we close any question no okay see you tomorrow <laughs>